Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with my take on sweet and sour pork. A much lighter, much easier version that uses lean, delicious pork tenderloin. So here's how I put it together. I started with one pork tenderloin. Those are like, I don't know, a pound and a quarter, pound and a half, depends. All right, you want to trim all the silver skin off, as usual. And then all I did is cut it in four pieces and flattened them out a little bit with my hand. I could have showed you that, but the camera wasn't on. But not very hard. Cut it in four pieces, pound it to about an inch thick, and you're good to go. I generously seasoned it with salt and pepper. I got my cast iron skillet, or basically any frying pan will work, nice and hot. I preheated the pan on high, now I turned it down to medium, with just a little bit of vegetable oil. And I seared those about five, six minutes per side. Okay, it's going to depend on how thick yours are. But what we want to do is we want to cook these almost all the way. We will finish warming them up in the sauce. While my pork tenderloin medallions were cooking, I mixed up my sauce. So I'm going to be honest. I have no idea what's in real sweet and sour sauce, which, by the way, is not real. It's fake because real sweet and sour sauce, like in Chinese cuisine, is nothing like the day glow American takeout style. But regardless, I just winged it. So I took some ketchup, some rice vinegar, some shiratsa hot sauce, lots of that. Any hot sauce will work. A nice dash of soy. And then a couple tablespoons of brown sugar. All right, one thing you'll notice I'm not adding here is any kind of cornstarch mixture. I don't need it. I don't like it. I don't want it. Okay. I also had one 8-ounce can of pineapple chunks. I drained the juice into my sauce, gave that a stir, and I'm going to, of course, reserve the pineapple chunks for later. Now, at this point, my pork was just about done. I took it out of the pan to reserve. All right, just let it rest on a plate. I added a teaspoon of butter to the hot pan, still on medium heat. And you're thinking, why butter? That seems odd. Well, first of all, this whole dish is odd. And second of all, pineapple and brown butter is such an amazing combination. So I threw in my pineapple chunks. I cooked those for about three or four minutes till they were, you know, golden brown. Then I poured in my sauce mixture. It started to bubble because the pan was hot. All right. So that basically is deglazing the pan. Pork tenderloin is so lean, you really shouldn't have any grease in the pan you need to drain. But if it looks kind of oily, you can drain it first. I put in a dash of chili flakes and then three or four cloves of minced garlic. Of course, you could have added that right to the sauce mixture. I didn't. It's okay. I turned it down to low because I want to simmer this for about five or six minutes to cook the garlic, to mellow it out a little bit. I'm going to add a splash of water, all right? So you're going to always adjust a sauce like this by adding liquid if it gets too thick. You can see the consistency there. After about five or six minutes of simmering, I put my pork back in, which like I said was cooked almost all the way. Pork tenderloin, I went about 140 internal temperature. I like mine kind of medium. So one tenderloin made four nice medallions. You could easily double this. And that was it. Once your pork is heated through and cooked to your liking, throw it on some white rice, spoon over your pineapple chunks and that sweet and sour sauce. You can top with green onions. I had some chives from the backyard, so I figured I'm going to use those. But green onions would also be fantastic. And there you go. I'm going to cut into this, and it was super good. Okay, Obviously much, much lighter. Traditionally, sweet and sour pork cut in cubes, deep fried in a batter, then tossed with that thick, thick cornstarchy sauce. It's just so much thicker and heavier. So I really think this is a nice alternative. Pork tenderloin, about the easiest thing in the world to cook. All right, still a little bit pink. You want to cook it more, cook it more, but you don't have to. A lot of chefs even cook this much less. So really nothing to be scared of. It should be juicy and it should have a tinge of pink to the meat, okay? You people in your got to cook the pork more just drive me crazy. You don't, totally safe. And that's it. That was really, really delicious. I hope you give it a try. So easy. Anyway, check out the site for all the ingredient amounts. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.